So one of the things that we stated right up front when we started talking about energy was that we don't have a very good definition for it in terms of words. So the goal in some sense is to learn how to recognize when it's present. And there are various forms that energy can take. So we've already talked about a couple of them in terms of kinetic energy and potential energy. We'll talk about thermal energy later in this class. We'll talk about electromagnetic energy in the second semester course. There may be other courses that you take that talk about chemical energy or nuclear energy. And again, there, there are other forms beyond these that you might encounter energy as. But for the moment, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the two that we've talked about up to this point, kinetic energy and potential energy. And the reason that we want to start by focusing on this two, on these two, is that that allows us to define what's known as the mechanical energy of a system. So the mechanical energy, E, is, going to, is nothing more than kinetic plus potential. So what we can do is we can calculate the energy of a system by saying, well, figure out all the pieces that define your system and then add up all the kinetic energies of those pieces plus all the potential energy of those pieces. And so we know that the kinetic energy, well, that's the object's energy due to motion, due to its motion. And so we can calculate that out as k equals 1 half mv squared. Potential energy, on the other hand, we've talked about two types, right? So that's energy due to an object's position. And the reason the potential energies are potential energies is because they just care about where the object is located, not the path that it took to get there, which is part of what makes them conservative forces. So, and then we can calculate out two types. One's the gravitational potential energy, right? Where we said, hey, that's going to be plus or minus mgh, where we're going to know whether we need to put in the plus or the minus sign, and then mg and h are all positively valued things. Well, there's the elastic potential energy, U sub s, where we're going to calculate that, 1 half kx squared, where k is our spring constant and x is defined to be the displacement from equilibrium. Now, for both of these, what's critically important to remember is if you want to talk about the potential energy, then you need to talk about the, then what you're really doing is talking about the potential energy relative to a zero point. So you get to define the zero point for your gravitational potential energy problem, and then the plus or minus sign tells you whether or not you're above or below that particular gravitational zero point. For the elastic potential energy, again, that zero point's already built in. The zero point is at equilibrium, and so that x is defined to be the distance you are away from equilibrium. So you can use these equations to figure out what the energy is of your system by basically saying I can define zero points, use those to calculate all my potential energies, add those to the kinetic energies for however my masses are moving, and then again just do that for each piece that I, that's involved in my system and add all that up. So this again is back as energy is a bookkeeping process, so it's we're keeping track of what all the energies are. The critical thing to remember is just that to talk about the energy of your system, you need to define what your potential energy zero points are so that you can be clear about what the, uh, what the potential energy is.